It was just a few days ago that when I awoke, I had such a heaviness on my heart. All of these things that have been happening to all of us and the things that are coming on the earth and this pandemic that we are facing, I was a bit overwhelmed by it. I made up my mind I was going to slip out of bed and go to my place of prayer. I went into that little spot in my house where I usually pray. And I began to call out on God and ask God for help. I finalized my prayer with just saying, Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And I need a word from you. And you know what I found? that when I opened my Bible, I looked at Psalms 84. And as I read that Psalm as a prayer and read it with my heart, I found that the Word of God gave me such strength and courage to face the day. It was like a total transformation. I realized that these days and these times are difficult for all of us. As ministers of the gospel, we are supposed to be the ones that has the answers. And yet sometimes we feel so inadequate. But I'm coming to you today because I felt prompted in the Holy Ghost that rather than us focus on what we can't do, we can't have church, we can't gather together, we can't do this and we can't do that and limit your groups to 10 and we've heard so much of this it just seems like we focus on the things that we've lost as far as our freedom is concerned but I think rather than to focus on the things that we can't do in this hour we need to realize that there are still some things that we can do and those things belong to us and God and the relationship that God has given to us. You know, I found in my own life, and I just have to speak to you from my own personal reference, I have found in my own life that as long as I can feel His touch in my life and know that He is walking with me, that no matter how hard or how difficult the days become, it gives me strength to know that I am not alone. And so today, when I woke up, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to become proactive. And I thought to myself, what can I do about all of this that's happening? We feel helpless. It's like we're sitting here waiting on something to come, some storm, some problem, some invisible enemy that's out there. We don't know what's going to happen next or who is going to become ill in our close uh, family relationship. I thought to myself, how can I be proactive, Lord? And then it really hit me. It hit me so hard that you can pray. That is the one thing that you can do. When I became superintendent, I put at the top of the priority and the list of my priorities as far as my superintendency is concerned that we need to develop a culture of prayer in this district. Little did I know that before the year is out and before I had been finished with the first year of being your superintendent, that we would be facing this crisis and that our lives would be so disrupted. But I want to come to you again with this fervent feeling in my heart that prayer can make a difference. My Bible tells me that I can pray. You know, today, the book of Jeremiah just says in Jeremiah 6, 16, uh, Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? 
Walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. I want to tell you today that we can, we can walk the old paths. How did my grandfather start this church in the middle of the Great Depression? Yes, in 1929, he came here when the economy was bad, when the stock market had completely crashed, when people didn't have a job. He told me about a time when his whole congregation was unemployed. There was not one person in his church that had a job. I want to tell you God provided for them then and I believe that God will help us today. The thing that we have to focus on is not what we can't do. We're wondering how can we get by with all of these restrictions on us. I want to tell you if they lock us in a room, we still have prayer. A person can pray. Nobody can stop me from praying. And I am calling this district to prayer. I'm asking you to pray as you never have prayed before. But not only that, I'm asking us to link together in fasting. You know, I reached out to my friends, the superintendents of our surrounding districts, the North Texas District, Brother Rick Flowers, uh, the Texas District, Brother Jeff Story, and the South Central Texas District, Brother Nathan Scoggins. And the four of us are moving together to bring our districts together for Monday, this coming Monday, to make it a day of fasting and prayer. What we want to do is just ask every person in every church that can to fast at least one meal or, or more. Whatever you can do, do it with all of your heart. And more than that, don't just go with fasting, but go, go with prayer. Let's pray and ask the God of heaven to come down and visit us and touch us. I feel this passion burning in my heart that God spoke to me today. And I come before you now to ask you to join with me in prayer this coming Monday. I believe that we can make a difference. You know, in the book of Joel, I find a very powerful, powerful uh, set of scriptures. In Joel chapter 2, he tells us to blow the trumpet in Zion in 2 and 15 blow the trumpet in Zion sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders gather the children and those that suck the breast let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of his closet let the priest the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say, Among the people, where is their God? I believe that this is the time that the church needs to be the church. We need to do what we can do. What can we do? We can pray. We can call on the God of heaven. If we believe he hears and answers prayer, and I know that you believe it, I know that when we pray together, God is going to do something awesome. The Bible says, just immediately following that last verse that I just read, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That's what I want him to do. He said, yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. And then he goes on. And just a little while later, he said, Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. 
but he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you and you shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And then that wonderful passage of scripture that we heard preached from the day of Pentecost, and it shall come to pass, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I believe if we can join together in prayer, yes, it's a bit old fashioned. It's just straight out of this book, but I want to tell you, I am pleading with you to join with us in prayer. Our district board and our leaders of this district love you very much. And we are here for you. I want you to reach out if there's anything that we can do. But the one thing we can do, no matter what happens, we can be in prayer this Monday. At midnight on Sunday, we will start a 24-hour prayer chain. And we will pray that entire 24 hours and we will fast as much as possible during that period of time. If you can't fast medically, I encourage you to just do whatever you feel like you can do because every sacrifice God is going to see. And together, we've got four districts that are going to be doing this together. And I believe God will hear us and answer our prayers. You say, well, what am I going to pray about? I want you to pray that God would come down and visit our land, that he would help us to know how to be the church in such a time as this, to give us wisdom and courage and faith, not to live in fear, but to live an overcoming life, even in terrible circumstances. He said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to tell you the spirit of Antichrist is trying to take over this world. And it seems like the whole world is moving toward taking control. But before they get control, the church has the last say. I believe that we can pray and God can make a difference. God bless you is my prayer. We love each one of you. My prayer is that God would bless you and prosper you and make his face shine upon you in this hour.